Hello and welcome everybody. I am at Alexandra Palace today and I am talking about Tartarian architecture. Alexandra Palace is a grade two listed building now used as an entertainment and sports venue in North London, situated between Wood Green and Muswell Hill in the London borough of Harringay. Alexandra Palace was intended to be used as the People's Palace and the building is often referred to as Ali Pali. The social and cultural purpose of Alexandra Palace was to serve as a public centre of recreation, education and entertainment for Londoners. Alexandra Park was open to the public on the 23rd of July 1873. The designers and planners intended Alexandra Palace to be a counterpart in North London to the Crystal Palace of Cinnamon in South East London. In 1859, Owen Jones draws the first designs for a palace of the people that was to be constructed in North London. Owen Jones is best known for his design work for the construction of the Crystal Palace, which is a building that is very questionable. The reason for this is there has never been any clarified logistical explanation as to how Crystal Palace was constructed. Perhaps the structure of Crystal Palace was already there because it was an example of Tartarian architecture and the old world. The construction of Alexandra Palace was carried out by John Johnson and Alfred Meeson and then opened on the 24th of May 1873. Apparently the structure of Alexandra Palace was made from recycled materials that had been salvaged from the International Exhibition of 1862 or the Great London Exposition. That was a World's Fair that was held in 1862 in South Kensington, central London. Exactly 200 acres were purchased for the construction of the Alexandra Palace Gardens as part of the Alexandra Park. The landscape designer Alexander Mackenzie, who was employed by the Metropolitan Board of Works, commenced with the landscape design plans of Alexandra Palace Gardens in October 1859. And then Alexander Mackenzie won the design competition for the park and he started to landscape the area in February 1864. Then on the 30th of June 1868, the Alexandra Palace racecourse opened to the public. Although it is hard to historically verify, it would seem that there was an ornate Tartarian palace situated there before the 1st of January 1859. And I believe this would have actually dated back further. Not many know that Alexandra Palace once had a railway station, which was constructed by the Muswell Hill Railway and opened to the public on the 24th of May 1873, alongside with Alexandra Palace. Alexandra Palace Station was located on the northwest side of Alexandra Palace and was the branch terminus from Highgate Station. I have always been puzzled by the disused train tracks which course through parts of North London and the disused platform still exists at Highgate Station. Much of the London and North Eastern Railway line which used to run between Finsbury Park to Highgate Station is now part of the four and a half mile green walkway called Partland Walk which lies between Highgate Station and Finsbury Park. Alexandra Palace successfully opened to the public on the 24th of May 1873 and then only 16 days later after the opening a fire broke out and burned down much of Alexandra Palace killing three staff members on the 9th of June that same year. This completely destroyed the overall structure of Alexandra Palace and required a complete rebuild. With tremendous proficiency, Alexandra Palace is rebuilt and reopened on the 1st of May 1875. 
the newer version of Alexandra Palace was designed to be larger and more elaborate than the original version and therefore much of the rebuilt Alexandra Palace featured a concert hall, theatre, circus and extensive dining areas. Alexandra Palace was also home to a number of educational exhibits that were in keeping with the academic flavour of the Victorian period. Alexandra Palace became a popular destination for entertainment and recreation. There is an unusual connection between Alexandra Palace and the construction of the Barton Rawson airship by Dr. Francis Alexander Barton. From the 14th of March 1902 to the 19th of July 1905, Dr. Francis Barton constructed his Barton Rawson airship in the grounds of Alexandra Palace. The Barton airship made its first flight on the 22nd of July 1905 and it quickly became a popular attraction at Alexandra Palace. The Barton airship was often used for aerial sightseeing and it also made a number of record-breaking flights. The Barton airship and others such as the Beadle airship were let off from the grounds at the front of Alexandra Palace. Interestingly, London was meant to be a cityscape that was covered by smoke from all the coal burning because of the Industrial Revolution. So would the Barton airship have flown in smoke? What was the real purpose for the flights of the Barton Rawson airship? The huge stained glass window of Alexandra Palace is a historic work of artistry. It was apparently installed in 1873 but was then destroyed by fire 16 days later. The stained glass window was then rebuilt in 1875 and it has been on display at Alexandra Palace ever since. The original window displayed religious figures from the Holy Bible, important historical events and epic landscapes. Additionally, the colours in the original stained glass were very vibrant. But like so much of the rebuilding which occurred within Alexandra Palace from the 16th of February 1875 to the 30th of April 1875, its structure and design were then repurposed. So Alexandra Palace is now completely different to what its original purpose would have been. My other fascination with this incredible building concerns the Alexandra Palace organ that was installed in the Great Hall of Alexandra Palace on the 15th of April 1873. It was then destroyed by the fire on the 9th of June 1873, but it was rebuilt by Henry Willis in 1875. The Alexandra Palace organ has 12,500 pipes spread over 46 ranks. It has a wide range of sounds from the softest whisper to the loudest thunderclap. The Alexandra Palace organ is also equipped with a number of special effects such as tremolo and vibretto. Was this used as a sound vibration resonator? it would seem somatics were being used throughout Alexandra Palace. The somatic patterns were combined with the geometric patterns of light which brightly shimmered and glowed. Could Alexandra Palace have actually been some kind of healing temple, like so many other buildings that display Tartarian architecture? There is so many unusual facts that have arisen because of Alexandra Palace, some of which concern dynastic Egypt. Remember when we are told that the Victorians were obsessed because of the tomb of Tutankhamun was discovered in 1922, the hieroglyphic artwork from the dynastic Egypt was used to exemplify the idea of luxury and a exotic lifestyle. What if the connection with Egypt was referencing some kind of dormant esoteric power and knowledge? Is there a connection between Alexandra Palace in North London and the Library of Alexandria in Egypt? 
We know that this location was a major centre of learning in Egypt around 3000 BC. Why is it that so many ornate looking buildings that were designed with Tartarian architecture were burnt down? Was the destruction of so many buildings which exemplified Tartarian architecture deliberately instigated to suppress the actual history of planet Earth? When such questions are given consideration, then everything becomes very disturbing and you realise that history is certainly not what it seems. A very interesting point to note is that on the 2nd of November 1936, the BBC launched the first high-definition televisual service from the studios at Alexandra Palace. Less than a month later, on the 30th of November 1936, the Crystal Palace at Siderman Hill in South East London was burnt down. You can still see the huge metal aerial of the Crystal Palace transmitting station to this day from Alexandra Palace. Both structures are clearly situated on ley lines. One of the most mind-boggling archive pictures I found about Alexandra Palace concerns the boating lake, which is situated behind Alexandra Palace. In the photograph of the boating lake is a miniature version of a metal framework structure that looks similar to the Eiffel Tower in Paris. I know this area of North London very well, but this discovery is quite incredible to find out. Was the metal framework by the boating lake some kind of aerial to power the rail tracks, or was it some kind of generator that could send electromagnetic signals? It certainly resembles the kind of structural designs which Nikola Tesla cleverly produced and the Tesla tower he wanted to manufacture for the countries of planet Earth looks somewhat similar to the structure next to the boating lake at Alexandra Palace. Apparently this was used for the Barton airships and loading people on board. But what if there was another purpose? Alexandra Palace Railway Station closed in 1954 after the London Underground extension of the Northern Line to Muswell Hill was cancelled because of funding problems after World War II ended in 1945. The original buildings of Alexandra Palace Railway Station were subsequently demolished but the platforms were kept and the ticket office of Alexandra Palace is now used as a community centre. Currently Alexandra Palace has just celebrated 150 years which would make the official opening date 1873 but from looking at the historical timeline after the international exhibition of 1862 which was a world's fair held in South Kensington in London and the construction times of these buildings from the Victorian period were likely to have been constructed previous to the dates which have been stated. Again, just like the Great Exhibition or the Crystal Palace Exhibition of 1851, I cannot find any photographs of the construction of this magnificent building. No doubt there must be some photograph somewhere that can be used to solve these puzzling historical occurrences. In 1980, Alexandra Palace suffered another devastating fire with the whole building burnt down yet again and had a complete refurbishment. This beautiful building still stands today and is used for exhibitions, events and concerts but maybe not for its original purpose. History has been largely fabricated and is now a subject of mundane information which does not educate the masses. But the reason there is so much confusion, depression and sadness in the world is because we have been consistently deceived and most do not even care as they are so intensely programmed to accept the distortions and lies that are given to them. 
We have been educated with what someone wants us to believe, but not what we are supposed to factually believe, which is the truth. A lot of individuals have lost themselves and forgotten who they actually are. So by remembering what these buildings were truly used for by the Tartarians or the old world, we can begin to remember our true potential. We must remember there are ley lines all around us that pulse throughout planet Earth. None of us have truly incarnated here to waste our existences in a mundane way. Everything about the material world is truly magical when we allow ourselves to perceive the spiritual truths of planet Earth. So thank you everybody for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in the next one.